He was a young singer whose music career was short and whose life was tragically lost at a time when the world expected him to shine. He was the one and only Stuart Nelson. In this video, I look at the birth, early life, career, and death of Stuart Nelson. Plus, I take you on a visit to one of the schools he used to attend, the house he used to live, and take you on a view of his grave. My name is Nigel D. Salmon. Welcome to Jamaican Chapter. Stuart Emmanuel Nelson was born on Friday, May 5, 1972, in Mandeville, Manchester, to mother Claire Clayton and father Robert Nelson. He began growing up in the community of Leeds in St. Elizabeth. When little Stuart Nelson reached school age, he started attending Santa Cruz Preparatory School. He later attended Bethlehem Primary School in St. Elizabeth. There, he took piano lessons. Though his name is Stuart, the other children in his community, including adults, affectionately called him Stewie. As a frisky little boy, he loved to play with other children in the 1970s and early 1980s. His mother, Claire Clayton, brought him and his siblings to church almost every Sunday in Leeds, St. Elizabeth. It was at church that his singing talent was confirmed in front of an audience as extraordinary. His mother Claire fully realized his son's extraordinary gift very early. And what made Stuart Nelson stood out was not only his voice, but also his impressive personality. He not only held a mic and sung, he would get into the mood of the lyrics with eye-catching facial expressions and body language. It soon became apparent to many that his talent needed exposure beyond the rural community of Leeds in St. Elizabeth. His mother went to the United States of America in 1983 while Stuart was still attending Bethlehem Primary School. Missing his mother very much, Stuart composed the lyrics of the song, I Miss You. His mother recalls this incident. I came to America. And he missed me that much that he would and he got an assignment at school that time he was going to Bethlehem Primary School. And he missed me so much that he um he wrote an, a composition about missing me. Yes. And I I think um, Mr. Mills' son, Mr. Mills, I saw this in the recitation that time I came here already and they called and tell me that he wrote this recitation and he wanted him to record it. And he can sing and Stuart tell him, so yes, he can sing it. So that's how he was 
recovered. In 1983, Stuart Nelson was entered in a popular contest of the time called the National Pop and Variety Competition. It was a national competition held each year with the purpose of discovering new talents with the aim to train and encourage them to become professionals. The Pop and Variety Competition was held in memory of Veer Johns, a white man who had died back in 1966 and was famous for organizing talent contests and had helped to launch the careers of many Jamaican musicians. The Pop and Variety Competition accepted various talents, not just singers. In mid-1983, when Stuart Nelson entered the competition, he quickly became a crowd's favorite, singing his own song, I Miss You. The national finals of the competition was held at the National Arena on the night of Monday, July 25, 1983. Finalists from the 14 parishes appeared on the show. Stuart Nelson represented St. Elizabeth. Though he knew he could sing well, it was up to the 11 years old Stuart to prove his worth inside the national arena that Monday night. The competition came with the Veer Johns Cash Award of $2,000 plus a scholarship. The winner of these awards was to be the contestant judged the most creative, professional, and energetic in his or her presentation and having the best audience response and stage presence. When it was Stuart Nelson's turn to perform in the national arena, all love broke loose. He went deep into the emotion of the song, I Miss You, bringing out the right facial expression, interpreting the lyrics with the perfect body language, and ended the song on his knees. The audience inside the national arena erupted in sounds of applaud, wild excitement, whistling and praises. The show was hosted by Bagger Brown and he announced Stuart Nelson the winner. In this photo, Rita Marley of Tough Gong International and the widow of Bob Marley presented the happy Stuart Nelson with his portion of the Veer Johns Cash Award, which was $1,000. Though this photo shows Stuart receiving his Veer Johns Cash Award of $1,000 and even a scholarship, Stuart did not actually receive anything according to his mother. When he moved overseas, was it this scholarship that let him move overseas? No. He never said anything from that. They stole everything. The thousand dollars that they gave him, they gave him for the contest. Yes. They didn't give him nothing. Oh. And when my sister tried to find out what happened, they threaten her to kill her if she going to talk about it. Oh. Yeah. So, and then they used to take him to go to Kingston. He used to be with Bob Marley and the Bob Marley children them at that time. And he, you know, when I talk to him, he said, Mommy, I, I don't want to be with them. Winning the National Pop and Variety Competition further propelled Stuart Nelson into the spotlight as a singer. He was thereafter booked for various events 
including the Miss St. Elizabeth Festival Queen Finals on August 5, 1983, Teen Jump Festival in New Kingston on August 27, 1983, and many more events. That same year, Stuart Nelson had done the studio recording of the song, I Miss You. The song was produced by Tommy Cowan. The record became popular both locally and overseas. Despite his singing talent, when asked what he would like to become in the future, Stuart Nelson said, a doctor. In 1985, Stuart Nelson moved to Connecticut, United States to live with his mother. There, he participated in church services. You know, he didn't want to stay in Jamaica, so I said, okay. Yes. And I, I sent for him. When, when he moved there, was that like, did he like put the music career on hold or he just gave up on it? He kind of put it on hold, but he used to sing at our church. That was the North United Methodist Church in Hartford. He used to be in the singing choir. Okay. And the school okay. that he, the school that he attended in Connecticut, because I'm trying to go into, you know, his final years. Um, this what was the name of the school that he attended? In May of 1987, a relative of the family died in Jamaica. Stuart Nelson's mother, Claire, decided to attend the funeral in Jamaica. On the day she was leaving, she hugged her 15 years old son and said goodbye. It was to be the last goodbye. Um, what did you discover about the death of of your son? How and how, and and what really happened? Okay, let me explain something else before I reach to that part. Yeah. When he came, when he came here, and he was going to pass middle school, they had a recitation contest. Yes. Among the, the state. Okay? Yes. And he won that recitation contest. What he was had it? two cocks that he got from the shirt, from the, the school. Uh, something or another for us. And he um, eh? put on in art. Yes. And he won that. And that November, before he died, he was supposed to go for the this, this, this state-wide thing in Washington. But he never could get to Washington because he died in June. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. it was in November he was supposed to go. Yes. He went on an end-of-year trip because they always have an end of year trip when a child is going to leave from middle school to high school. Oh, okay. So, he went on his end of year trip. And that's where he was drowned in a pool up in Park Hampstead. What do you 
understand happened to him? Well, I was because I wasn't here when it happened. Yes, I um, I understood you were in Jamaica at a funeral. Yes, my grand my father's mother had died. Um, a young man by the name of Kingsley. Yeah. He told he told me that he said sister Claire. Everybody called me sister Claire. He said sister Claire, this police lady wanted to talk to you. So I said to the I said hello, how are you? I um, I said Kingsley said you wanted to talk to me. What happened? And he said Mister Lawrence called. I said, my husband called and said, yes, Mr. Lawrence called and he said, you have to go to the airport and pick up a ticket to come back because it was two at night. Wow. I said, died, how? And he, he said, we don't know, the, the, we don't know how he died, but he said, you have to go to Kingston to pick up a ticket to come back to America because he died. And that must have been very traumatizing. Oh yes, it did. It did. I just, I just, I believe me, I was in the street of, of Santa Cruz and I just fall to my knees. So when you get back to Connecticut, um, what was the, the what was the investigation, and you know, was it accidental? Was it caused by someone else? No, he was just learning to swim. Okay, yeah. And it it, it was ten teachers and all the children, seventy-two children, and ten teachers was there, and. The other children them was at because they have different different they had pools and they have pond and some of them was at the pond but he said he can he wouldn't go down there because he don't know how to swim properly so he stayed up near the um, where the pool was and I don't know nobody can tell me what happened why he was in the in the deep part of the pool. Oh. And his friend came back and said, where is Stuart? You know, and they look around and, him, and he, he said he saw him in the bottom of the pool. Wow. And he died in there. Wow. And he took him out. He took him out. He him out and he put him on the side of the, um, the pool. And the, but the lifeguard was a white girl. Yes. And she, she said she's not going to put her mouth on no black woman, black person. Oh. So nobody was there to help him because they said he was talking, and but he was coughing, trying to cough, and. They, um, they call the ambulance, the ambulance take 20 minutes to come. Oh. So, that's how that happened. I am at the entrance to the Santa Cruz Preparatory school and this is where 
Stuart Nelson attended while he was living in Leeds, St. Elizabeth. All right. So, uh, can you imagine how here look in the 1970s, no, well, yeah, 1970s, 1980s, as little Stewart made his way to school every day. Of course, the place looked a lot different. And what, I, what I'm doing is pretty much just to retrace his steps as we look at his life. It's a popular school. The Santa Cruz preparate, I'm just gonna say prep. The Santa Cruz prep school is popular here in Santa Cruz. It's not too far out of the town. And a lot of children come here. It's one of the cleanest schools. For those of you, you who know it, personally know it. And Stuart Nelson's uh, parents, they wanted him to have the best education. So... You can see why they would send him here. And this is the school. That's the exit. And just like you see the children here playing, I'm not going to video them too much. But um, just as you see the children playing here, uh, uh, Stuart Nelson was doing the same thing. He was just a little boy, just playing <laughs> and going to school. And he was known to do a lot of playing because even Tommy Cohen in an interview said that they had a, some hard little, hard little time getting him to record his signature song. Because he just want to go and play. <laughs> All right. So this is the school that Stuart Nelson attended. The Santa Cruz Preparatory School here in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth. Now, let's visit. It's time now to visit his home. Yes, let's take a visit to the house that he lived with his mom and his siblings before he moved overseas. Okay, so let's visit the house that Stuart Le Nelson lived in Leeds, St. Elizabeth. All right, guys, so now I'm in, I'm in Leeds, St. Elizabeth, and I am at, I am in the, lo the, the area that Stuart Nelson grew up in, here in the quiet community of Leeds, St. Elizabeth, and I am at the house he grew up in and I am speaking with a relative of his 
Leon. Okay, so here's Leon. He's gonna tell us a little more about the early life of Stuart, Stuart Nelson. Yeah, man, the popular yeah, man, we used to singer. Go up and run wheel together, you know. Yes, yes. He wasn't living at the home where he lived at the time. Yes. But he used to visit a uh, other uh, relative. Yes. Long yes. in South and then. Yeah, man. And we used to run wheel together. You know that wheel where we use with a piece of wire. Yes, yeah, yes. Man, we have a lot of fun. He was a very jovial person. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Friendly, very friendly. Yeah, man. Love to ramp a lot. And he and this is where he grew up. So this is where he grew up. Um, his mother and you know other relatives, aunties, right? Man. A lot of aunties. Yes, yes. Um, both six aunties. Yes. And he have he have a sister and a brother. But the brother um born when he already passed. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Before he, 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 he. oh, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, so we are we are actually in front of the home now that he he grew up in. Um, that he used to live. Was it was his father living here or just his mother? Really? I know his mom. His mom, yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, so yeah, you're, you're gonna take me on a tour, right, of the, the, the house that he used to live. Just maybe, you know, a little closer look. Um you know, to see what life was like for him while he was here. Alright, so let's get closer to you know where Stuart used to live. And as I say, this is a road that he would take every school day to school. And I've shown you the school that he grew up in. And there are some bad dogs here. So we're taking into the history of the young prodigy, the young talented. Stuart Nelson. Yes. So this is it's a, it's a beautiful view. And of course, Stuart Nelson grew up here in the 1970s, the early 80s. Probably would look a little different, but not much has changed, eh? Also, not much has changed since since he lived here. So, this is the house Stuart Nelson was living in prior to leaving Jamaica and going overseas. And so this is absolutely uh, an interesting look into his past, you know, yes, yes indeed, and I would say he was born here, inside here, or hospital, oh, Oh yes, because yes. I wasn't living here when he was living here. Yes, I, I advise it. Oh, I advise that um information over. Yes. And you can see the view. You're looking straight up into his experience. Yes. So, Stuart Nelson have this kind of view as a child growing up before he left the island. So you can see, guys, in the history of. The young man many of you heard on the radio so many times but had no idea where he was from, who, how he grew up. So we now see a piece of his history. 
in this video on Jamaican chapter. All right, so we have seen his house. Now, let's take you on a virtual tour, a virtual look at where he was buried. Stuart Nelson was buried at Northwood Cemetery in Windsor, Hartford County, Connecticut, USA. Here is a photograph of his grave, a headstone and it reads beloved son stuart e nelson may 5 1972 to june 5 1987 and below that you see I miss you and of course we all know that is the title of the very composition that he wrote for his mother all right so this is the story of Stuart Nelson for everyone who fell in love with his song we can only say i miss you thanks for watching and remember to like comment and subscribe for more interesting videos like this